Hi, Polyglot Conference. I'm Kevin Chen, co-founder at Italki. I'm really glad to be here. What we do at Italki is we connect people around the world to learn languages. We're big supporters of the Polyglot Conference, and we love this community and everything that all of you are doing. We would love to meet with you in person this year, but as you know, it's all about COVID. And so we thought it might be interesting to share with you some insights from our side as a tech company in the education space about how we think COVID is affecting language education. Also, since this year the theme is a window into my world, we thought it might be interesting um, for all of you to learn a little bit more about Italki and to see our office and hear from some of our staff so that you could see a window into our world at Italki. COVID has had a huge disruptive effect on the world and on the world of education. And it's shown us a world where we can't travel, uh, we can't go to school, and we can't meet each other in person. This has been, ironically, really good for technology companies. A lot of people are trying Italki for the first time. They're joining um, in record numbers, and we're hearing similar stories from other people in the language industry. One of the big questions is, is what happens after COVID? Once the virus goes away, will we go back to the way things were, or are we gonna continue on with the way we're doing things now? And is technology able to support um, these new ways of learning? What we're realizing is how important primary schools are. Many parents are worried that their kids are falling behind and that they're not able to provide them the right background and education for their children. Parents aren't trained teachers. What they need are schools that can provide that socialization for their kids. Parents also need schools because they need to work and schools also play a role as childcare. I think even the biggest fans of online education don't believe that we're ready to take the place of all the aspects of a primary school. We also think that universities are going through a lot of change. Many universities are digitizing their courses, uploading their lectures, doing many things to help bring the costs of education down. And that's good, but I think the problem is universities is more than just academics. It's also about creating an environment and a community for students to transition into adulthood. Online education is able to provide the academics, but they can't provide that college experience. And we think that after COVID, many students will vote with their feet to go back. So what about the world of language education? Are we going back to the way things were before COVID? And if you ask me, I don't think so. I think language education is different for a number of reasons. One thing is that learning a language is more informal. It matters less about where you learned it, and it matters more about if you're able to use it or not. Another thing about language education is that it's more skills driven and it requires practice. And the third thing is that there's a strong cultural connection to language learning. In all of these aspects, online education is able to do a lot. And it's for these reasons, I believe that the world after COVID is gonna be different for people who are learning languages. When we think of online education, we're usually comparing it against traditional. And what we think about traditional education is a classroom that's in a set location at a set time. Maybe you get a certification at the end, and it feels very much like a factory model of education. What online is able to offer today is a much more personalized experience. You can learn materials that you think are interesting. You can study at a pace that works for you. And since it matters less about where you're learning from, you're able to take that flexibility and use it to your advantage. You're able to learn from home, learn uh, at a time that works for you, whether that's before work or on the weekends. In this respect, we think online education is really a step forward compared to traditional. We think language education is also different to other subjects in that it's partly a skill, and that means you need to practice it in order to improve. It's not just about knowledge acquisition. And in that respect, we think traditional education has always had a huge disadvantage because there's only one teacher and many students, and that just naturally means there's less time per student. We often say that in order to become fluent, you need to be able to practice with native speakers. And just like when you're learning an instrument or playing music, um, you can't just listen to music, you can't just watch videos of it, you can't just play Guitar Hero and expect to play in a band. You need to be able to practice playing with other people in order to improve. That's something that we think online education is able to offer um, that was very difficult for traditional education to offer before. The third thing I think that's special about language education is that there's a cultural component. Learning from a foreign teacher we think is hugely motivating and it's an advantage uh, 
uh, and not like a disadvantage where it can be for other academic subjects. If you were taking the US Common Core, the International Baccalaureate, or the Chinese National Exams, you want to find a teacher that shares the same cultural background and understands your national curriculum. In language education, once you're past the initial beginner stages, where it is often very helpful to have someone who speaks your language, you want to find someone who comes from that country because you're interested to learn more about their way of life how they think, um, you're just interested to learn more about their society and their country. We think in this respect, foreign teachers are a huge advantage. It's something that um, draws people into language education. We don't think that language education is going to replace study abroad or living abroad. Those are still life-changing, important experiences. But if you're talking about as an alternative to traditional education, I think that many people will find online education to be a effective, authentic and meaningful alternative. So coming back to COVID and how it's affecting education, we think that it's really a question about how the world of education is adopting technology. And in places like primary school and in higher education, there are strong reasons why people will go back to those schools when COVID goes away. But when it comes to language education, we think that there are strong reasons why people will adopt the new technology. Because of the nature of language education, that it's less formal, um, that it's more skills and practice based, and that because online education offers the opportunity for more personalization, as well as these international cultural connections, we believe that COVID isn't just a one-time event. What it has done is it's exposed many people to the new possibilities, and it's the acceleration of an existing trend. One final idea. What COVID has shown us is that we are ultimately responsible for our own education. Whether you use traditional methods or the new technology, it's up to us to guide our own education. And that may be the most important lesson to come out of COVID. Once again, we really appreciate the chance to speak at the Polyglot Conference. Uh, we hope that you enjoy all the talks that are coming up. We hope the world recovers from COVID soon. And until then, stay safe. And I hope that we'll get a chance to connect online. And with this year's theme in the Polyglot Conference, we now want to show you a window into our world. All right, so as part of Windows Into My World, let's take a short tour of the office. Come on. Hey, Ilya. Hey, Kevin. Hey. You know we have our friends at the Polyglot Conference? Yes, I'm aware, the window to my world. Yeah, that's right. So it's all about hearing more about Italki staff, and they'd love to hear more about your background. Mm. How'd you get interested in languages? Oh, me. I studied many well, languages. Actually, hmm. why don't we tell that to our friends at the Polyglot Conference? Sure, let's do that. So my name is Ilya, and I work as a data analyst for Italki. I joined particularly because I've been studying many languages throughout my whole life. One of the biggest challenges in terms of languages I had was Korean. After a year of college, I actually went to Korea. I just studied by that time, I studied Korean just for like two semesters, so I didn't know much. And my only contact was Sion, a friend of my friend, and he was supposed to welcome me, but I didn't raise my expectations, nothing like that. I was prepared for a solo adventure. Sion met me, and he welcomed me to his family. Uh, he introduced me to his parents, to his relatives. But the funny thing is that nobody actually was able to speak English except Sion himself. So every time I would meet his relatives, I would speak Korean in a very limited, in my very limited Korean. And uh, I think this was a summer that made me empowered in terms of languages because I felt that my journey would be very different if I did not speak any Korean. So all the things that I experienced, all the things that I went through were amazing simply because I could speak a tiny bit of Korean by the time I went there. Yeah, let's keep going. So this is our marketing and our international department. Um, they help us reach more people around the world. Hey, Itza. Hey, you got a moment? Hey, what's up? Hi, Kevin. Yeah, hey, these are our friends at the Polyglot Conference. Hi, it's yeah. so cool. Yeah, <laughs> this year's theme is Window into Our World. Cool. And it's basically asking about how languages have affected our lives. Oh, cool, so it means like how it changed their lives or mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, that's so cool. Would you share your story? Well, actually, it's a long story, but... That's cool, that's cool. Oh. Why don't we tell our friends at the Polyglot Conference? Okay, all right. Hi, I'm Itza. Uh, I'm the social media manager at uh, Italki. I come from a mixed race family, so my mom's Mexican, my dad's Belgian, 
So uh, really, I had to learn to speak uh, Spanish as well as Dutch and French um, to just know how to communicate with family. Learning languages allowed me to position myself and understand uh, different cultures a little bit better. But it wasn't always perfect, obviously. Like back in the days, there was no internet to you know, teach me Spanish or French. Um, you know, and I think it's so refreshing to have a platform like italki now that can really help people to, through the internet, um, yeah, connect with their heritage or connect with the culture that they're from or understanding other cultures. Let's see some more. Here's our tech team and also our product team. And yeah, we'll just go around and take a look. Hey, Joseph. Hey, Kevin. Hey, what are you up to? I am trying to work out some user segments, uh, trying to understand why our users learn the languages they learn. Oh, cool. I just wanted to let you know that we're doing a short tour of the office for the Polyglot Conference. Wow. They wanted to know a little bit more about how you got into languages. Um, the theme this year is Window into Our World. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, why don't we go into a different room and you can tell the friends at the Polyglot Conference. Oh, I thought you were good to ask. I'm Joseph. I'm a data scientist at Italki. I'm from Nigeria. I am an Igbo man, and we speak Igbo. I used to think there was no need for people to learn languages, but I realized that learning these languages help people connect to different places, and even learning more languages help them connect to further more places. I'm learning Chinese as I speak, and uh, I used to live in Suzhou, and now I'm in Shanghai. When I look at data at Italki, I realized like, a lot of people learn different languages from different people across the world. And when I look at the numbers, I see that there are lots of people who generate these numbers. And these people have a story to tell. I have traveled and worked in different countries. And the best part of it is experiencing the different cultures and languages that I have seen in those countries. And I would advise that people do the same. Yeah, let's see who else is around. So at Italki, we have a lot of meeting rooms that we've named after constructed languages. So for example, Esperanto and Edo. Um, these are some of the aug international auxiliary languages um, yeah, around the world. Oh, hey, Yvonne. Hi. Hey. Uh, say hello to our friends at the Polyglot Conference. Hi. Uh, yeah, I heard you speak a lot of languages. I'm not a polyglot, but I've tried a few languages. I did German and Japanese before, and now I'm doing French. I also speak my home dialect, Changsha Hua. Wow, that's great. Would you mind sharing more about your background for our friends around the world? Sure. I grew up in a small town in the middle of China, where people don't even speak standard Mandarin. But I always had a dream of traveling around the world. So when I was 25, I had the opportunity to travel abroad. I ended up visiting 14 countries, hearing over 10 languages. Talking with different people about their languages and culture is always fascinating, especially in their native languages. The most important life lesson I learned from those conversations was never judge, because everyone has a story, a different reason, and a different way of looking at the world. There are great stories about how languages have had an impact on our lives, and I hope that you found some of the stories here at Italki uh, interesting and maybe shed some light into your own language learning journey. You never know where languages will take you. I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Um, I hope you enjoyed the short tour of our office, and thanks again to everyone at the Polyglot Conference, and thanks again for being a part of our world. <laughs>